Hi guys, Elementor 3.18 is set to be released on December 4th, 2023, and it is expected to include a lot of new features, including performance updates as well as accessibility updates. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some of those features, as well as some features that are already released in 3.17 that you may have missed. So stick around and then we'll get right to it. The first feature we'll be looking at is a new Elements Manager. What that does is that it allows you to manage the elements that are being loaded in your Elementor backend. So let's see how it works. You go over to Elementor, the Elements Manager, and then you see a list of all the elements that will be loaded in your Elementor backend, including third-party elements like the ones from Jet Engine. And you can disable the ones that you don't want to be shown on your Elementor backend. This will help you to like speed up how the backend loads, although unfortunately it has no effect on your front end, but at least it helps your backend to be sped up. So how do you do that? Let's say we don't want to load the call to action widget and then maybe the calendar widget and the carousel widget as well. Maybe we never use it on our pages. All you have to do is disable them, save changes. You get a warning, we just save it. And then now when you go to your Elementor backend, First, I've not refreshed the page yet. You can see the call to action widget is showing up. But when we refresh the page, I will try to look for that widget again, the call to action widget. You see nothing shows up because we've disabled it from the elements panel. One other nice feature is that once you finish editing your page, you can disable all the unused elements. So you go over back and this time you see scan element usage. And now it will give you a detailed usage of how you've used it on your page. So I've only used the heading widget eight times, but I've used some of these widgets. And then the ones I've not used, all I just have to do is say deactivate unused elements. So once you do that, it will deactivate the ones that you have not used. You can now save changes. And then when you go back to your front end and refresh the page, this time you only see the widgets that you use regularly. So these are the widgets that I've used. I've not used any of the other widgets and that's how easy it is. It makes your backend load faster, but like I say, it has no effect on your front end. To improve your loading of your front end, ensure you activate all the Elementor performance features under Elementor settings and features like the improved Gutenberg loading, the improved image loading, the improved asset loading, and all the other performance loading features that are there. And that should help you with your front end. The next feature we'll be looking at are related to the Elementor loop grid and the taxonomy filter. So the first feature we'll be looking at is the pagination. So let's go over to the first loop grid because there are two loop grids here. Now let's go over to pagination and then choose one of them. So let's say we want now the load type. The default is the page reload. So let's test it out. We'll choose the second loop, same thing. We choose the same type of pagination and we leave it as page reload and we disable the other options. So let's publish it and go to the front end. You'll notice that with this first type, if you go to page two, the page reloads, but then both loops move to the second page. So that's the first option. If you want both of them to be affected by each other, so we'll go to page three, both loops move to page three. It doesn't know what you want. If you want them to be done individually, then you can go back to your loop and then choose the option for individual pagination. Choose that for the first one and the second one, the same thing. Let's publish it. Now when you go over to the front end and you try to move the pagination to page two, only the first one goes to page two. The second one remains on page one, go to page three. Same thing. This one remains at page two but the page reloads. If you don't want it to reload, there's a new option of the Ajax filtering. So let's go back. And then rather than using the load type as page reload, we can choose the Ajax. We do that for the second one as well. Pagination, choose the Ajax. And now when we publish it and view it on the front end, you notice that now it doesn't reload the page. It just does a loading animation and then it calls the second page without reloading the page. So third page, 
same thing and the second one doesn't get affected so you go to the second page the third, fourth page you can go over to any page you want and both of them don't interact with each other the two loop grids are separate from each other then what if your loop item so let's say that for these related articles you don't have any loop grid item to show there let's see what happens so let's go back and then for these related articles let's say we choose the query type to be manual selection but we don't choose any option let's publish it on the front end you notice that it just shows a blank space but the related articles title is still there which can be a bit off-putting because let's say you have a blog post and then there are no related items you just see the blog post with all the information and you see related articles and then you see an empty space without nothing in there that can look not nice and it's also especially important when you're doing like the taxonomy filtering and then you filter and then there's nothing there it just shows a blank space so how can we add in something to show up when there is no information there that's where the new option has come in to be able to style the empty state so let's go back and then this time you see there's a new option called the additional options when you choose that it shows the nothing found message when you toggle that on it comes up with an it comes up with an information so let's publish it and then this time when you go back to your page if there is nothing found then you get this text read to you you can style it however you want so let's go back left if you want it to be h2 you can choose the h2 but this is already an h2 so let's say h3 it will get there and it will show in the front end so you can go back to the div and say maybe you want the option to show the first thing should be an h3 slash h3 and then you want a paragraph to continue some other text so let's publish this and view it on the front end you get that information so let's say the person is trying to go to the related articles you can now see this information and then he can understand that there's no related articles and what next to do you can add in whatever you want there if you know how to write your own html you can just write it whatever you want in there and it will show up here you can also go further which although it's not supported right now because you can see there is no option to add templates but you can add the short code of your template in there so let me go over go to the page and go to the templates save templates i already created one template so let me just copy that go back to our page so rather than this information let me just put that information in nothing shows there let me go to the parent one and set it to the row see there's nothing showing at all it's just showing the name of the short code but when we publish it and go to the front end you see that our template actually shows up so that's one trick you can use you can actually put in the short code of your template in there and it will show up but i'll show you where some issues are happening at the moment but let's continue for now the next thing we want to do is to add in our taxonomy filter and then there's a new option in taxonomy filter which is the multi-select filtering so let's add in a taxonomy filter and then i'll link it up okay let's publish it first and refresh the page now let me click on it again there are two loop grids it's the first one we're trying to filter the taxonomy should be the genre and let me just set it to the left give it some styling so let's say on active state it should have a background color of maybe blue and the text color of white let's publish that so initially you see if you go to the front end that the filtering is there but we can only select one at a time we can only select one filter at a time but now with the new elemental 3.18 they've given you the option that you can select multiple so let's go back to the content tab the settings you'd see the option to choose multiple selection so let's toggle that on Within that, there are two logical connectors, which are one, the and. So let's say you say you have this set of movies, 
but you want to be able, the users to be able to choose that they want it to be both action and comedy. They only want movies that are both action and comedy. So all they do is use the and selector. So let's publish it. Let's check it. So now you say you want both, let's say both action and comedy. Then there's only one movie like that. Then if you say you want only comedy and let's say romance, only three movies like that and so on and so forth. If that is how you want your own logical connector to be, then this is fine. If you want, on the other hand, it to be an or, so let's say you want all movies that are comedy or all movies that are romance all should be combined together, then you can go back. Rather than choosing the and connector, you can just choose or and publish it. If you go back, this time, let's say we want it to be action or romance. Then you see that it comes up with because I set it to only show three items, but now you have pagination, so you can go to the second page, the third page. These are a combination of all the items that are either action or romance. This is the logical or connector, so that's the new taxonomy filter. But like I said from the beginning about this template, if you notice, let's say let's go back to the selector and then just say this time it should be and, and we we'll go to the loop grid and choose under the additional options we say it should show this when there is no option so let's first show it with some text so let's say a text based message let's publish it and check it out if you go and say we want it to be both action and musical it shows that text based message you see this one still showing the nothing found but let's try and do the same thing for this top one again. Let's give it that, the template. Let's publish it and go. You notice the action and musical. It doesn't pull in the dynamic content because someone pointed out recently, which I am beginning to agree with, is that Elementor does not properly pull in dynamic data when it is related to the container. If it is related to a widget, then it will pull it in properly. But whenever it is related to a container that is trying to pull in the dynamic data, then it doesn't work out fine. I hope Elementor fixes it because it also causes problems with even when you're trying to loop through to a second page and then you have a dynamic background image, it also has the same issue. So let's test it out now. Let's go back. Let me go to this one. Let's put it back to the just some text. Now, let's say we're going through the query and we want it from manual selection. You see, we want it to be back to the posts. So the items are shown again. But this time, right now, I'm using an image widget and a text widget. So let's choose another template. Whereby I use the background image, which let me show you. So let's edit it, save. See, we just have a container and then within the container we have the heading widget and another container which has the post title so the background is a featured image so let's go to the style tab you notice there's the featured image as the dynamic data in the container so let's go back and then show it you see now we still have the two it is showing on the first page all the loop items are showing properly but now when we go to the second page, unfortunately, it's there, the text are there, but the image doesn't show properly anymore because the image is blank. You can show this by, let me just add a background color. So save and back. I'll give the container itself a background color, something that is easy to see. So let's publish this now. Check it again on the front end. See, the first page is showing, but when we go to the second page, only the text are showing up. The background color is basically gone because whenever you add in a dynamic data to the container itself, the Elementor doesn't pull it properly. So I think they are working on it, but that is the limitation you have to think of for now. So that's the same problem that happens when we try to use the shortcode as your 
empty state, it will also have this issue that it doesn't pull it properly. I will link to the article where they show all the features that are going to be coming out in the Elementor 3.18. You can go and check it out. There are some accessibility options, which I will not go into because for my testing, it is giving me mixed results depending on the one I use for testing because I use NVDA, I use TalkBack, I use VoiceOver, and they are all giving me different mixed results with the new accessibility rules that are bringing in. So that's why I haven't brought out any video about it. But once I do a proper test, then I will do a video where I explain the new accessibility improvements that they've added to the new widgets. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.